Well, hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Walls with a saxophone lesson for you. Now that you've had your first lesson at school with me, you're ready to go home and start practicing at home. And this video is going to give you some tips and reminders on things to do during this first several weeks of practicing your instrument. And then hopefully I'll have some more videos for you to help you as we move through the book. Let's uh, review putting the reed on your mouthpiece. Let's remember that when we loosen the ligatures, we turn to the left, lefty-loosey, and righty-tighty. The reed goes on to the mouthpiece. The writing side, the flat side of the reed, goes down on the mouthpiece. And then we use our thumbs to move the reed around to adjust it. Hopefully, once we have the reed on the mouthpiece at your lesson, you won't need to do this, but if it comes loose, this will be good information for you. So I line up the tip of the reed with the tip of the mouthpiece, and then I slip the mouthpiece into the ligature, into the larger end of the ligature, being careful not to break my reed. I slip it all the way on, and then I look again, I can always loosen the ligature and adjust more with my thumbs moving it side to side, never pressing on the tip of the reed because I'll break it if I press on it. I line it up, pull the ligature down with my thumb, maybe adjust it a little bit more, and then I tighten the screws. Righty-tighty, turning to the right to tighten. The mouthpiece goes onto the saxophone neck, and the reed lines up with the inside curve of the neck. If the neck doesn't go onto your saxophone easily, you can put some of the cork grease that you have that you put on the cork up here, put a little bit of it on here to help it slide on, which is what I've done on my instrument. I gently slide that on. I can give it a little twisting action to get it to go on. And then I can give my tightening screw here just a little bit of a turn so that it's snug. I can actually still move the neck. And now you can see that the mouthpiece and neck and instrument, they kind of form an S, don't they? Okay? Well, let's talk about where our hands go. And let's talk about the neck strap as well. So you've got your neck strap onto the little loop that's on the back of the saxophone. And when the saxophone is hanging on the neck strap, the mouthpiece should come right to your mouth. And if it's too high, or especially if it's too low, and that will happen a lot at first, you need to adjust it. So you grab your buckle right here, the adjustment buckle, and I'm lifting up on the instrument with one hand and I can pull or push and I can slide that around. It can be a little difficult to move at first. But you don't want it to move real easily or it will be constantly sliding down on you when you're playing, which is kind of frustrating. So, we learned three notes at our very first lesson. And we went down to the bottom of page four to exercise number five to learn our first note. And if you recall, we have, we have these four keys up here on the saxophone. The, our index finger goes on the first one. Our thumb rests on the thumb rest. And I want to curve my hand to keep these fingers away from these side keys. I don't want to crush these keys. If they open, the instrument will not play the note that I want it to play. So I've got my thumb on the thumb rest, my first finger on the first pearl, and when we put the next two fingers down, when we, when we start doing that in just a few minutes, we will remember that we have one key, that second pearl is open. You won't use that for a while. But the first note, Thumb on the thumb rest, 
first finger on the first key. This was the note B. And when we put the mouthpiece in our mouth, we want to gently roll in our bottom lip and just kind of say, ah, and place the mouthpiece in your mouth with your teeth on top of the mouthpiece. And you seal your lips. and blow. Make sure that your right hand, your right thumb, is under the thumb rest. We're resting the instrument on the thumb, but make sure that none of these fingers are hitting any of these keys down here. Keep them out away from the instrument. Only one key is pressed down for this first note, B. Pretty easy note to finger on the saxophone. Keeping your left hand fingers curved and away from the rest of the keys. See that? And here's our B again. Play it with me. I'll step back away from the camera so that you can see that I'm standing up straight. I can lift the saxophone with my fingers, or I can let it hang on the neck strap. I say, ah, with my bottom lip gently rolled in. I want to rest the reed on my bottom lip, and my bottom lip is a cushion for my teeth, my bottom teeth. But my top teeth come into contact with the plastic of the mouthpiece. I seal my lips around the mouthpiece and I blow. If I put too much mouthpiece in, the, in my mouth, it squeaks and squawks, that's not good. If I don't put enough mouthpiece in my mouth, I can't get anything. So I want to put enough mouthpiece in my mouth, seal my lips around the mouthpiece, but not too tightly. Then you can see how much mouthpiece I'm putting in my mouth. Let's go to exercise three for the note C. So to go up one note higher than B, I go to my middle finger and my left hand up top. Still nothing down here. Just the middle finger, thumb on the thumb rest, the black thumb rest. This is the C. course in your band book you play the C and then it says rest and then practice playing another one play it with me if you would like don't worry if you don't sound exactly like me but the instrument should be pretty much playing that note as long as you're not letting your hands hit any of these keys that are under it or any keys down here you'll get the right note. And then the first note on page four, of course, is D. And this note is just a little bit harder to finger. We use the first finger, the second finger, the third finger, and now down here in the bottom, we put the first, second, and third finger down, and we roll the thumb onto the register key, like that. So we have thumb, first finger, skip a key, second finger, third finger, right hand, one, two, three. And this is a real easy note to hit keys that you don't want to hit on. Make sure, again, that your fingers are arched and not hitting keys that are under them. We'll, we'll use those keys later. And here's the note D. Again, here's your D. Okay, and you can pause the video at any time and practice these notes before we move on. Exercise two, count and play, has us play four quarter note Ds. We see four individual notes. They each get one beat. And then in the next measure, 
we rest for four beats. The four squiggly lines are quarter rests. So if I have four quarter notes, that makes a whole measure. If I have four quarter rests, that makes a whole measure. Just like four quarters make a whole dollar, four quarters are in a football game, four quarter notes make up a whole measure. So here's exercise two, count and play. And we go one, two, ready, play. the video and practice that exercise again or two or three more times. That would be good. And now I'm back to exercise three, a new note. I put my middle finger down for my C, nothing touching in my right hand. My thumb is on the thumb rest, not on the register key. And I'll practice my C again. <sighs> rest. Play it with me again. Good. And you can pause your video and practice that note some more. And now we'll look at exercise four. Two's a team. This one gets a little tricky. We start with four C's. C's are easy notes to play. Middle finger C. We're going to play four of them and then we're going to rest four beats and while we're resting those four beats we're going to put all our fingers down on all the keys and we're going to add the thumb to the register key so that we can play four d's so we play four c's and exercise four we rest four beats and then we play four d's so here we go here's four c's Ready? Rest, rest, rest. Here's my D. Rest, 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 rest. Now you're going to want to take the mouthpiece out of your mouth and look to get all your fingers down and get your thumb on the register key, and I understand that, and you can do that at first, but your goal is to be able to go from the C's, leaving the mouthpiece in your mouth, and finding the fingering for the D, okay? And you'll notice a lot of times when I put my keys down, they pop because I put them down strongly. The more muscles you use in your fingers as you put your keys down, the easier it will be to remember. And of course, you're going to do this every night for the next week. So by next week's lesson, you're going to be really good. So here's exercise four, two's a team again. We begin with four C's. One, two, ready. Rest, rest, I'm all ready for my D's. Now, boys and girls, let's review the B, which was the first finger. Here we go. First finger's down. Teeth on top of the mouthpiece, bottom lip gently rolled in. And let's play another one. Ready? Here's our B. Very good. And now we're looking at exercise six called Moving On Up. And it begins, if you're looking at your music, and you should be, you're looking at a song that starts with five Bs, and then we rest three beats, and then we play B, B, C, C, D. Let's try this. We'll start with the five Bs. One, two, ready flow. Rest, rest, 
two Bs. Ooh, that's pretty tricky, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty challenging at first to go B, B, C, C. That's not too bad, but to find that D fingering is going to take some work and practice. Let's practice the second half of this, where we go B, where we go B, B, middle finger C, C, then everything down, including the thumb on the register key, play one D. Let's try that right now. B, B, C, C, D. Ready? Sorry about that squeak, but you know, that happens. Even to somebody who's played for a long time, it happens. Let's try it again. Here we go. Ready? Same thing. Good. And pause the video and practice that exercise. Practice just the last five notes a few times, and then play it all a couple times. The more you play these beginning exercises, the better your skills will be when you need them as we move on. Hey, take a look at the top of the next page, and let's just get a sneak preview at the next two notes. In exercise seven, we go down one note from the letter B. So here's my B, and down one note is A. I'm using my B key and my C key combined to play the note A. And here it is. My third finger is up. Nothing is touching down here. My hand is, my fingers are curved so that I'm not hitting other keys. Let's play that A again. Ready? Good. Practice that a little bit more if you'd like. Pause and then come back and we'll look at exercise nine. Touchdown for the note G. And here's the G. So the G is the B finger and the A finger and the third finger for G. Nothing down here. The thumb is on the black thumb rest. No register key. And here's our G. Play that with me. Here's our G. Good. If, when you come to your next lesson, if you're familiar with the A and the G, that'll just make that lesson go that much faster and easier. Let's talk about where the notes that we have learned today where they are on the music staff. Let's take a look at the band book. I'm going to bring it in close for you. And here we have at the bottom of the page was the first note that we played. Move that over for you a little bit. Here's our B. And the B is on the middle line of the music staff. There are five lines on the music staff. We have five fingers. And we name the five lines of the music staff are E, G, B, D, and F. Every good boy does fine. Say that with me. Every good boy does fine. So the first note that we're learning in the band book is on the middle line. Every good boy. B for boy. So that's the B. And the next note we learned, the C is not on a line. It's between two lines. It's in a space. And when a note is in a space, it can be F, A, C, or E. And the spaces spell the word face. F, A, C, E. And our second note, is in the third space, F, A, C. It's just one note higher than the B, isn't it? B and C. And then, of course, in exercise one, we learned 
D, D. And it's on the second line down from the top. Every good boy does fine. There's the D right there on the second line down, or the fourth line up. Every good boy does fine. So there it is right there. And I know that everyone out there knows their alphabet. Think about this. We learned the A. The A is in the second space, F-A, right? F-A-C-E. There's the A in the second space. Everybody knows their alphabet. We, ha we have learned A, and then of course, B, C, D. What do you suppose the next note up from D is? A, B, C, D, E, and then F, and then up high we would have a G. And then once we get to the G, we start over with A. So think about, think about it again. We learned the G down here, that lowest note that we played, and the next note up from G is A. And then the B, the C, and the D. So just worry about these three notes. Make sure that you can identify them well. Familiarize yourself with the A and the G. And then in a week or two, I'll have another video ready for you to help you play the next series of exercises that we will work on on the saxophone. Great job, guys. Practice every night, and I'll see you next week.